name is Andrew Gregory. I go by he and him. Uh, I live and work in central London as a hairdresser. I'm 50 years old. Uh, my work takes me all around the world. It's a job that I absolutely love. I'm also a pole dancer, which is uh, another side of my life, which is so important to me. Since I became an amputee, which was three and a half years ago, I've gone on to win world titles uh, for my pole dance work and pole sports. Uh, I now also compete against able bodied pollers, so it's not just the para side that I do, it's also mainstream competition. I also teach pole and pole sports uh, here in uh, central London. So, my experiences within the community uh, is it's very varied for me because I've been through three different stages. Uh, up to my 30s, I had no disability whatsoever. I was living life as normal and uh, it, was, it wasn't really part of me. And then I had a motorcycle accident, which left me with fairly catastrophic injuries on my left lower leg. Initially, it wasn't so much of a problem for me because I think I thought it would always end. I never really dealt with that thing of being disabled within the community until many years later. As, a, as disabled as I am now, I haven't really experienced the scene properly again because it, it, we're really just sort of emerging from that. Uh, but I did used to find very much so that with a walking stick um, and being in the pain that I was in, uh, venues that you would go to would tend to be you know, out of the way, there'd be in older buildings that weren't really geared up for access, um, uneven floors, slippery dance floors. I think now as an amputee, I actually find it slightly easier to, to move around as an amputee than I did with my walking stick. Uh, my pain levels aren't so much, so I think I, I would actually find the access issues slightly easier with the disability that I have now. The scene that I grew up in, uh, especially in London, it was at a time when Body Beautiful was the, the thing. You know, it was everyone was down the gym, everyone was looking perfect. And I do find that my opinion of how I look now is definitely focused on how I experienced life then. Even though the the community these days is much more diverse than when I, I, I was in my younger days. And it seems to be more accepting. I still have this mindset of the gay scene as it was uh, 20 years ago. So when I talk about the gay scene, I mean this, that, that's where I identify. Um, it is definitely about perfection. It's about living the dream. It's about living life better than anybody else. Because we have to try that a little bit harder. So having a disability within a dating environment, um, oh, this is such a big issue. I think initially, uh, after the accident, I, it was not really an issue for me. I kind of, again, I lived with that belief that my disability was temporary, that it was going to be something that was going to be fixed. And then as it became obvious that this walking stick was not going to disappear and the pain was not going to disappear, uh, I started to um, get it into my head that actually I was now disabled and I found it increasingly hard to talk to people about it. So I'd meet people, they might not have noticed my walking stick or some nights I would go without a walking stick just because I was too embarrassed about it. But then that led to a whole situation of, I've got to speak to this person before I go home with them because I take my clothes off and this, the, the, the state that my leg was in then was, uh, it had to be explained, <laughs> it was going to be really obvious. So over the years I found that harder and harder and actually I kind of started to withdraw from going out as on, on the scene. And then I decided to go ahead with the amputation and part of it I did kind of think, oh maybe it's going to be easier now because I've definitely to explain, which, which is great, it's obvious. I don't hide my prosthetic, uh, I'm incredibly proud of my prosthetic, I think it looks amazing. Um, but then it opened up this whole other world of uh, people making judgments about me before they've even spoken to me. 
also, as an amputee, there's a whole world of uh, fetishism uh, amongst uh, about amputees. And I think it's not just about amputees. Obviously, this is my experience. I think it's, there's a whole fetishism about uh, disability in general. I think people like that feeling of looking after somebody. Um, I get asked a lot if people can carry me, which I find really weird. People think people shouldn't be having sex. I, this, I find this really hard to comprehend that why a disability would mean that you had to stop living. I do hate that thing of, that people have of, yeah, but how do you have sex? You know, do you have sex with your leg on? Do you take it off? All, all those kind of weird questions that people suddenly feel it's okay to ask. It's like, sex is sex. It's kind of, the mechanics of it are different for everybody. The dating scene has changed so much since I became an amputee. Everything is now online. And when I did my first online dating experiment, I actually didn't put anything about being an amputee on there. But then, you know, I get all this attention, which is great, but at some point I'm going to have to tell these people that I was an amputee. And needless to say, it was just so suddenly I stopped getting responses. So pole dance has definitely changed um, a lot of things for me, about me. Um, it's definitely made me com more confident in the way that I look. Um, you spend a lot of time in a tiny pair of lycra shorts. You know, you are, I have to video myself, I've got to watch the performances. So you suddenly become much more at ease with, with how you look. I've recently started working on performance art, uh, perform more performance based pieces rather than competitions where I light up my prosthetic, I might take it off halfway through a performance uh, and I've been in like much more sexually aware performances. Uh, the competition scene I do is the exact opposite, it's more about pole sport, there is no sexual element in it, it's much more about the tricks. The routine, so my, the performance side of it is something that I'm developing. Um, and I, I really enjoy that, that I'm not apologizing to anybody for, for being disabled. This is me, watch me, and you're gonna enjoy it. The era that we're in now, um, there's, there's definitely more uh, in the press, on t TV, about disability and including disabled people uh, under the bigger umbrella. I have come to this world as it's improving. Um, I think going back, you know, 10, 15 years ago, there was no representation. No representation whatsoever. So it's really great to see that the disabled people are finally being woven into the fabric of the, the general population. Obviously, there's never enough. Um, and there's so many different types of disability that needs representing. It's such a big umbrella um, and it's sad that we can't represent everything in one go on TV. It's, it's just not possible but to have the representation that we do have and the improvement uh, is definitely a big step forward.